I got a good one to read for you. This is from LA Times. Obama skews battle lines in class war. By Michael Hiltzik. This is uh, so disgusting. I'm going to play the socialist, the uh, so union of Soviet socialist republics in the background while I play this, while I read this article and make the comments. Here it goes. First I read from the article. Class warfare comes in many flavors, says Hiltzik. There's the variety practiced by the feudal overlords upon the serfs, and the variety waged by the Jacobins of the French Revolution against the monarchists. And then there's the variety that the Republicans claim to find in President Obama's proposed budget, a taking from the rich to reward the undeserving poor. He goes on. Yet, the true class war of recent American history is the one that has pitted the upper 1% of income earners against everybody else. Over three decades, the average family income scarcely budged while the wealthy have grown measurably wealthier. 1979 top 1% earned 8 times the middle 20% and 23 times the bottom 20%. By 2005, upper crust touched 21 times as much as middle class and the 70 times as much as the bottom. Adjusting for inflation, average American worker made 16% less than in the 70s, according to economist Benjamin Friedman. Obama says money in his budget would help to pay for programs chiefly aimed at the lower and middle income wage earners, including the tax credit relief health care. Does this constitute redistribution of income? You bet, says Hiltzik. That's what government does, but here he flips it on us. George W. Bush redistributed income too, from the lower and the middle income wage owners, wage owners who paid the bulk of the social security payroll taxes, to the higher earners whose income tax cut was financed out of social security surplus. Now he quotes an economist that can't believe he found the guy to, to back this. The guy says, this guy Peter Lindert, economist at UC Davis says, No matter how you torture the data, there is no negative relationship between the commitment to a welfare state and the rate of growth and how well we are off we are. There really is no case for saying what Obama is proposing will damage economic growth. <laughs> Hiltzik, how is the flat tax like the Social Security, a redistribution from poor to rich? What kind of a twisted perversion of logic did you wind yourself into in Bonnie Frank's dungeon, such that you have the tortured balls to call a tax that one of your saints, patron saints of socialism, FDR, instituted to call it an unfair redistribution as if the conservatives invented the damn thing, as, as if a flat tax is inherently unfair. Only in one of your emasculated little wet dreams can you imply the current progressive tax structure is unfair, where the top 2% pay 60% of total taxes. Let me explain why there has become increasing relative separation between the class quintiles, fuckface. That is because, as any economy grows, there is necessary exponential separation between the quintiles. Oh, I gotta play that lovely anthem again. Okay, let me explain why in simple terms. Say we have a village with Two basic technologies, a slingshot and the plow. The hunters use the slingshot to kill the animals, the farmers plant the seeds and harvest fruits and vegetables. Farmers trade with hunters, better hunters have more furs and meat to trade, better farmers have more fruits and vegetables to trade, so there is some income disparity already even in small low-tech villages. 
say like it's 50% between the best and the worst hunter and, and, uh, and the best and the worst farmers. But now somebody invents fire and a smelting of metal. Now blacksmiths can make better plows and better weapons, um, better tools, be which, which improves both the hunter and the farmer productivity and creates other professions. The result of a free trading between the new professions is a raised standard of living. But also, all of the professional, professionals can now afford to grow their families and hire more young helpers. <coughs> These helpers are not productive at first, so the professionals do not pay them more until they become more productive. As the best businesses grow, they employ more direct and contracted labor, ranging from low to high skill and incrementally improving uh, various technologies and specialties to earn larger profits from trade. The compensation difference naturally grows between the most productive people, not by brute strength of productivity, but by productivity that relies on knowledge, analysis, and good decision making between those people at the high end and the people at the low end who don't know anything they have to be trained it takes them a while to become productive you don't pay them so much that is why our disparities have grown between the 70s and now because the technologies mostly through computers have made the, the average worker vastly more productive but the people at the lower end whether they do or no, do not study in fact many do not study because of government welfare disincentivizes success and they don't care to study to become more productive with new tools and uh, and uh, embrace new tools to compete to find their specialties the disparity is not because the rich rob from the poor or the poor transferred money to the rich by flat taxes you goddamn zero sum believing a dipshit mouthy tongue sucking idiot kills it. Libertarians understand the world is not a zero-sum kindergarten class where everybody gets the same treat and takes a nap at the same time and everybody's art project is beautiful and everybody wins every contest and gets a big hug in the end. I know that's the way you want the world but it ain't fucking ever going to be that way never was never will be. You fucking pansy. Unfortunately for you you don't need an economics degree to see that your analysis is an adolescent to wank fantasy that is a lame offering to the altar of your anointed savior Obama, the second coming of Vladimir Lenin. And you're hoping that the utopia that Lenin dreamed of after he first completed the destruction of capitalism, that, that dream that never lived to realize the the uh, utopia that never came, but instead was supplanted by, by Stalin's dictatorship. Uh, you're hoping that, that soon will come the utopia of equal outcomes, of wealth and success, and the bliss of no competition, and the uh, government making all important decisions. Uh, but you're like all the other utopians, Hiltzik. You're a miserable excuse for a professional. A propagandist playing to the tofu crowd with the sickening, sanctimonious, fake compassion for the poor. When was the last time you really added productivity to the world? <laughs> That's right, you never have. And you never will. You're a parasite. And if things get real dicey here in the anarchy accompanying the rising war over capitalism, you'll be one of the first to be deselected. <laughs>